Good morning. I'm coming to you, as you can see today, from the graveyard. This is a beautiful spot in the St. John's campus. If you have not had an opportunity to walk around here and see some of the historical markers, I encourage you to do so. It's particularly beautiful today. You can hear the birds, feel the sun. A nice time and a nice place to come together here at noon for noonday prayers. The prayer book provides for um, daily devotions for individuals and families. They're very short. They begin on page 136 of the prayer book. The service for noon is a psalm, a reading, prayers, and, uh, and today it will include a short reflection by me. And so we begin with Psalm 113 on page 138 of the prayer book. Give praise, you servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Let the name of the Lord be blessed from this time forth forevermore. From the rising of the sun to its going down, let the name of the Lord be praised. The Lord is high above all nations, and his glory above the heavens. A reading from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 26, verse 3. O God, you will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are fixed on you. For in returning and rest we shall be saved. In quietness and trust shall be our strength. What lovely words for today. When our minds are fixed on God, who is infinite, who cannot be comprehended by us, and yet who can be experienced and felt, we know that the vastness of God and God's greatness and goodness are so much bigger than anything else we could ever possibly imagine, any problems of our own. And so because we understand that, we are given rest, rest for our minds and rest for our souls, because in quietness and trust, we will find the strength to carry on. Isaiah was an inspired prophet, and still learning from him Lo, these 3,000 approximately years later is impressive. I wonder, in our times when we are disquieted, how getting a way out of that is possible. And it is possible. It's nice for people like me to offer platitudes about God, but how does it work? in real life? How does it work when we need that quietness, when we are seeking it and don't know how to find it? One of the, I think, universal truths of human experience, perhaps I'm wrong, but I think it's true for everyone, is that when we are down and out, when we are inwardly focused and concentrating on the things that are in our lives which are not working, which are giving us pain, which are troublesome and tiresome, when we are doing that, we are being very, very self-centered. It's not wrong. It's not even unusual. But that's not the question. The question is, in times like that, how do we practically, seriously, find that strength and peace to carry on? And I believe that it is a universal truth of human experience that when we stop from being centered in self, and we start being centered on the other, that we begin to see our own difficulties, our own frustrations, our own complexities in life in a completely different context. When we start to reach out, when we help other people in their problems, in their discomforts, in their disquiet, in their pain and anguish, 
suddenly our issues change. They aren't the same anymore. Perhaps that's the answer then today. The answer to finding that peace is to reach out. Finding that strength to go on is not given from on high, except for that it is. But we find the expression of that, we find the reality of that in our deciding to pick up our hand and to reach out and help for another. What can we do today? What can you and I do in the midst of essential quarantine to accomplish that help? What can we do today to look at the other in their need? How can we do that in our job contexts with our coworkers? Or if we've been laid off, how about the other people that have been laid off too? Do we have contact information for them? Can we reach out to them, see how they're doing? What about in our family context? What about being quarantined with people that you love and now can't stand being with all the time? How can we see their need and their desire for peace and comfort? How can we help them? What about our friends and family members that are far away? How can we reach out to them? What do they need? How might that be accomplished? It's a different story for every person, but today I wonder if our prayers might be centered on that, on finding a way to being less self-focused and more others-focused. Let's do that every day for a week and see how it goes. Continuing on page 138, the office suggests the Lord's Prayer. The contemporary version of the Lord's Prayer begins, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Let us also offer prayers on behalf of the many, the other, and ourselves. Let us offer prayers for the church in this time of crisis for its clergy and its members to know how best to hear the whisperings of the Holy Spirit and how to respond to them. Let us also pray for the mission of the church. How can we be the church in a time of lockdown? How is that possible? Let us pray for that. Let us pray for our nation and for all in authority, for our governors and our president, for our legislators, for our judges and mayors and magistrates, for our police and fire departments, for all of those who are running social services agencies, for all who work for us in our name as members of the government. Let us pray for them that they might see and know the will of God in all of this and that they might act accordingly. Let us pray for the welfare of the whole world for never was there a time where it became more obvious to us that we are not alone, that what happens here and what happens elsewhere affects all of us that we are in fact a global community, that contagion in one place is contagion everywhere, that pollution in one place is pollution everywhere, that hunger in one place is hunger everywhere. Let us discover the needs of the world and offer them to Almighty God, praying for discernment, for vision and strength, for courage, 
Let us pray for the concerns of our local communities. Let us pray for Duxbury, Marshfield, Pembroke, Kingston, Plymouth, and all the surrounding areas. But let us also pray for all of those in the areas of the country who have been tuning in to our Sunday services, including Colorado and Maine, New Jersey, New York, Florida, Illinois, Georgia, Arizona, California, Hawaii, France, New Zealand, Thailand, and so many other places. Let us pray for those people and their communities. Let us pray for those who suffer and those who are in any trouble. We have people in this congregation who are suffering, suffering from the loss of jobs, suffering in hospital from illness and from either necessary and unexpected surgery and complications or from other medical issues. We have people in this congregation who are suffering because of the lockdown and a desire to get on with life. We have people in this congregation who have many ways of suffering. Many of them are not known by any of us but themselves. We offer all of this up unto Almighty God at this time. Give us grace, Lord, to understand your presence with us. And let us pray for the departed. Let light perpetual shine upon them, and let their completeness be present in the presence of Christ. Finally, concluding on page the, uh, 138 at the end, let us pray. Blessed Savior, at this hour you hung upon the cross, stretching out your loving arms. Grant that all the peoples of the earth may look to you and be saved for your mercy's sake. Sisters and brothers, may the peace which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you.